Hello and welcome to the final lesson in the hypotheses testing chapter. To begin with and just to remind yourself of the process for doing the hypothesis test, can you fill in the blanks in the notes below? You might want to write these down in green pen. Pause the video now to give it a go. Okay, so hopefully you should have got that step one was to define the test statistic X, stating its distribution and the parameter P. Step two, you need to write the null and the alternative hypothesis H0 and H1 and consider whether the test is one or two tailed. Remember, if it's one tailed, then you'll have a less than or a greater than sign. If it's two tailed, you'll just have the not equal sign. Step three, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, determine the probability of the observed test statistic and more extreme values occurring. So remember when you're testing, you want to use either the less than or equal to sign or the greater than or equal to sign. Question four, state if the significant the result is significant or not enough to reject H0 and explain what this means in the context of the problem. For a two-tailed test, don't forget, you should have halved the significant level. Using your step-by-step -step guide that you've just created, can you try and complete the seven mark exam question? Like I said, use the guide to help you. Pause the video here. Right, going through the mark scheme, firstly, you should have defined what your null hypothesis is. In this case, P is equal to 0.5. You then should have defined the alternative hypothesis, so P being greater to 0.5. You then should have stated what your distribution is. So X is binomially distributed where your N is 30 and your P is 0.5. You then need to test. Remember, we said the probability of that event happening or more extreme values. In this case, that is the fact that x is bigger or equal to 21. Thinking back to our work on binomials, we then need to do 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 20 to eliminate the part that we don't need. That gives us a value of 0.0214. As this is less than the significance level, um, it is significant, so we reject h0. Just putting that in context, that means there is evidence to suggest that David's claim is incorrect and that the weather forecast produced by the local radio is better than those achieved by tossing or flipping a coin. Today's learning objectives, we're going to start by making sure we recall what a critical region is. We're then going to find a critical value and use that to determine the actual level of significance of a hypothesis test. Where this comes in handy, um, if you know the critical value, um, you are then able to determine whether, for example, if a new drug cures six people, if that's significant, or if actually seven people is significant. Time for an example. Malachi wants to see whether a coin is unbiased or whether it's biased towards coming down heads. He tosses the coin eight times and counts the number of times X it lands head upmost. What values would lead to Malachi's hypothesis being rejected when we're testing at a five cent significance level? Now to help me, obviously your calculator does this for you, um, but I thought I'd display the table of values that your calculator will give you for the cumulative values when P is 0.5 and N is 8. So for example, when X is 0, i.e. I get 0 heads when tossing the coin 8 times, my probability is 0.0039 and so on and so forth. Now, it's important at this point to recall that the critical value is the first value to fall inside of the critical region, causing us to reject the null hypothesis. Now, if we toss a coin eight times, we're expecting heads to land upmost four times because we do the eight times the 0.5. So I'm expecting my critical region to be somewhere over here. Now, because I want the extreme values, I'm going to start from the end and work my way upwards. So, for example, the probability of X being bigger or equal to 7 is 1 minus the probability of X being less than or equal to 6, which is 1 minus the 0.9648, which gives me 0.0352. 
that value is less than 0.05, so is in the critical region. I'm then going to do the same for the probability that x is less than, greater than or equal to 6, which is 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 5, which gives me a value of 0.1445. This time, that's bigger than 0.05, so not in the critical region. So if Malachi got six heads, that's not significant, but if he got seven, it is. So seven is our critical value. Now it's your turn. Pause the video to give these two questions a go, thinking carefully if the example is one or two tailed. Okay, going through the first question, I know I have a binomial distribution where x is distributed with n equal to 6 and p equal to 0.35. Now, if I am uh, doing something six times maximum, I already know that six is quite extreme. So I'm going to start by testing x bigger or equal to 5. This is obviously equal to 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 4. When I plug that into my calculator, I get 1 minus 0.9777, which is 0.0223. Obviously, I know that that is less than 0.05, so that is in the critical region. I'm then also going to test 4, so probability that x is bigger or equal to 4, which is 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 3, which means I have 1 minus 0.8826, which gives me 0.1174. Now, this case, that is bigger than 0.05, so that means that is not in the critical region. Um, if you think about it in terms of a number line, which obviously we do quite often, what we're then saying is if I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 is in the critical region, 5 is in the critical region, 4 isn't, which means none of these are, which therefore means that our critical region for this test is that x is bigger or equal to 5, which, because it is discrete, means that x is 5 or x is 6. So on this test, if I test for 5 or test for 6, I know that will be significant. With this second question, we've got that x is binomially distributed with n being 40 and your probability being 0.25. Now, it's important to note that because it says not equal to 0.25, that this is a two-tailed test. What that means is that if I do draw a quick number line, I am looking for two critical regions, one region down here in this tail and the other region up here in this tail. Now, the question says that we want a 2% level of significance, but it also has that line saying that we want it to be as close to 0.01 as possible. That will be really crucial as we work through this question. Now, I'm going to divide my page so that I can work out each tail individually. Now, this red tail is easier to work out because it's just going to be less than or equal to. Now, I know that 0 and 1 are quite extreme values already, so I actually started my working out from when x is less than or equal to 2 which gave me a value of 0 0.001, which I obviously know is within my region. I then had a look at when x is less than or equal to 3, which gave me 0 0.047, which is also in my region. I then had a look at when x was less than or equal to 4, which gave me 0 0.016, which is not in my region. Now, usually at this point, we would stop and just say it's less than or equal to 3. But that sentence that says it's close to 0 0.01 means we actually need to stop and have a think about whether 0 0.016 is closest to 0 0.01 or 0 0.043 is. In this case, I know that this is 0 0.053 away from where I want to be. This is 0 0.06 away from where I want to be. The actual significance level of a hypothesis test is the actual probability of being in that critical region. 
What I mean by that is if we think back to that first example, we found that the critical region was X being big O equal to 7, i.e. we were looking for 7 or more heads to reject the null hypothesis and determine that the coin was biased. The probability of being um, equal to or bigger than 7 was 0 0.0352 which means then that our actual significance for this test was actually 3.52%. A reminder, if you're working with a two-tailed test, you need to add the probabilities of the two tails together. Now it's over to you. Turn to exercise 7b on page 103 and complete question 2, 3 and 4. Once you've done those basic questions, move on to the worded questions of 7, 8 and 9, using the answers at the back of the textbook as you go. If you have any questions, please email me. Other than that, good luck.